Hey, how's it going? And I'm excited to bring you this tutorial today on how to create a moving platform, an elevator type of platform using first code. And this is kind of exciting as I'm starting to see the pieces of this all kind of work together and come together. So I'll show you what this looks like if I go into Fortnite here and I go start. I have this platform here. See right there? And then if I come on this trigger device, oops, I gotta hit play. I come on this trigger device, see how I just start going up on the platform? And it's really cool. The platform actually looks really cool. And this was all developed inside of the Unreal Editor itself. I didn't have to go to any external modeling program or anything like that. And so it's just a really cool thing to create. I think this has a lot of potential for games, like if you want to jump between platforms and things like that. So anyway, I'll be back in just a minute to show you how to get started with this. Okay, so to get started with this, we're just going to go into File, New Project, and I'm just going to pick a blank island template right there, and we'll just leave it called My Project M and go Create. And I'm not going to save my last project I was working on, and we'll go OK. Hopefully there's some new insights you might gain out of this and one of the things i'm trying to do is i'm actually trying to beat the verse system because i actually don't feel like learning in a new <laughs> computer programming language but i do want to take advantage of all the features and possibilities with the verse language so i don't feel like i need to know everything about the verse language i just feel like i need to know what i need to know and then i'm fine with that you know i'm really really fine with that here in this blank project i got two spawners and i'm just going to go ahead and delete that one spawner so i just have one now the first thing that to make this happen is we need a platform and we need a trigger and of course we're going to need a verse device to tie it all together and make it work so and that's this is going to tie all that together. Hopefully I'll go as fast as I can. So let's just start with trying to get a prop first. So I really don't want to have to go into a third program or a second program to model something. And there's no reason I should have to. There's inside of Unreal Editor, there's its own modeling program. And it's getting more and more sophisticated. So there's getting less and less a need to go outside of Unreal Editor. I think that's the whole point of this is that you don't need to go into another program. So I'm just going to get a box and I guess double click it and bring it onto the ground. Now I've already, it recognizes that I've already resized this, but it started out as, I believe this started out as a cube. So one, it's probably one, one, one or something like that. Or maybe it was bigger than that. One, I don't know why it did that. That's a little tiny box. Maybe it was bigger than that. Maybe it was a hundred. But anyway, you come over here, it's kind of throwing me off my game because I wasn't expecting it to be what, it comes in like this. It comes in like a box. So what you can do is with these controls, I find these controls really handy. I think it's easier just to use these. So like I said, how big do we want this? Maybe like 300 by, let's just keep it easy, 300. And then the neat thing is we can make it really thin. So we make it like a five or something like that. So use these controls to resize this. I found that to be the easiest. Then once you have the platform to the size that you want it, just go accept. And there's our platform. Now it's created a folder with the mesh in it. And if we double click into it, you can see it has this, it's auto assigned it a number and it just says box underscore that number. Unfortunately, as this stands right now, just as a box, a static mesh, it won't be recognized by the program. Unreal Editor won't recognize this. So what we have to do is we have to convert this. Don't ask me why. I don't make the rules. You have, we have to convert this to a blueprint. So this is the way they have it set up. So we're going to go to blueprint and you see this one that says building static mesh. That's exactly what we need. And we'll click on that and it creates this new blueprint. So I'm just going to call this because I had no one's told me different. I'm going to call this BSM for building static mesh. And I'm just going to call it platform. So I know I'll distinctly recognize that. We're going to go ahead and double click into this and go ahead and dock this up here for right now. And if we click on the static mesh and we go in the viewport, you notice it's completely empty. So we need to put the static mesh on it. So you see over here on the right side of where it says static mesh, we can put our, our box that we just made. It's right there. And then our box comes in, our platform, I should say. And so now our box is in here. And if we can compile and save that. And then what's kind of cool about this is there's actually, if you click here, you can add materials to it. I do get a message saying like it doesn't like us using this. It wants us to use a texture, but see, we get this message, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use that for now, that material. 
and then we compile and save that and just like that we have our our thing so now we've got this box on the screen right now and i don't want that so i'm going to go ahead and delete that and now i'm just going to drag this on the screen and there's our platform just like that and we didn't have to go to another program okay so now we come up here and under Fortnite folder, we're going to search for a trigger. And I'll just get trigger, a box trigger, and we'll just put it on the elevator right there. Okay, and we don't even need to do, I'm just going to leave it visible like that. And that is that. Now the last thing that we're going to do, and this is my tip and suggestion, because I'm trying to beat the system, if you have Windows, you should have a program called Notepad, but you should also have, you can get access to some other text editor. We just want, this is all the code for the elevator. I've already gone through it and figured it out and how to, to write it, so I wasn't going to do like a line by line, you know, explanation of what everything is. I think as you just familiarize yourself with the code and look at it and study it, you'll eventually figure it out. It's harder to look at in here, but what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we go into where it says Verse Explorer. We click on where it says My Project. And then we're going to go right click and go Add New Verse File to Project. And I'm just going to call this Verse Manager. And it makes sense to do it, to call it that because I see it as a controlling device. So I'm just going to call it Verse Manager. And then it's created a folder. Oh, let me clear out my search bar. It's created this file, this verse class, under this folder, Creative Devices. And now I can literally just drag this onto the scene, and that is a representation of my verse code being implemented in the program, right? And to get to the code, I just have to double click on this file, and there's our verse code. But I don't want this code. It just says, hello world, and I don't need that. So I'm gonna just delete that code, and then I'm gonna come over here onto WordPad with my pre-existing code. Now this up here where it says move platform is not part of the code. That's just a note to myself. But I'm just going to highlight all this and copy this. And then I'm just going to come in here and get control V and paste it. And it comes in, you see, with no errors. So what my suggestion is, is as you make your way through this first code and you're creating codes and functions to do things, just create a library of them as text files. And then when you just need a certain code, just go to that your folder with your verse text file, and then just copy and paste it into here. So I wasn't going to walk through all this, but just in kind of general things is this brings in our libraries, and verse has a lot of libraries it uses, at least 20 or 40 of them. So you could actually make a text file with just a listing of all the libraries, so you could just cut and paste it to go easy. All of the creative devices are made what they call instance editable, in Unreal Engine, they call it instance editable. It's where within the level editor, you can reference another blueprint or here they call them devices. But in Unreal Engine, you can reference another instance of a class or a blueprint through these this at editable. You'll see this in a minute, this at editable. But this part of the code is exactly, this is what Verse requires to do. This name is up to you. That's just the name of the your instance of that, your, I want to call it instantiating an instance, you know, you're instantiating an instance sort of with this, all that. And then this is just like on begin play, on begin play. And then everything that's going on here it, to, to minimize your confusion is everything's, you can just think of it as a function call. Everything's a function and everything's being called. So it's just like you have your creative devices and, and everybody do, does its thing. That's what all this is. It's just functions calling functions, and then it's got some game logic in here. If this, then call this. If that, call this. It's all function calls. So here we just have like print, and this is a function call, and we want it to print hello if we want it. And then we have our start position for our platform or end position. Um, suspend just means let the function do its thing. Leave it alone. It's going to be doing its own little thing. And then it's just if, you know, it just is the logic for, you know, if our distance is less than this, keep adding 10 to it. And then you can adjust these values to make it move even smoother. And then just keep looping, you know, are we less, are we there yet? Basically this is saying, are we there yet? Are we within 10 units of the end position? And if not, then keep adding 10 until we are, and then stop. And then I like to call things my 
like my trigger, my creative prop, because then I know that's mine, that I made that. Because sometimes the names can start overlapping and it gets confusing. And I like to think of this only event agent as almost like a cast to. It's like, we don't know who's stepping on the trigger, and that's why the question mark is there. Like, who is that? And void just means it doesn't return anything. So you just have to kind of suffer, I mean, study your way through all this, and you'll gradually start making sense. But just know this works, and this is the code that you need to make your platform move. And so just store it as a text file. So you can just copy this off of the screen. And it helps just to type through it anyway, because you'll, it helps reinforce your memory of it all. And then, so this is just if, do this until we're home, and then break. And that's it. And this move platform, this is a function we wrote ourselves. And then here, it's a function call, right? Move platform parentheses is calling this function that we created. This is what makes our platform move. Okay? And that's all we need to know for that. So now once we're in here, if I click on the first device right oh you know what i did is i put the code in but i didn't you'll notice over here i have the first device but you don't see any options that's because i haven't built the code yet so i got to come to here to verse and build code and then you see as soon as i do those are that's our instance edibles that we created so see this part over here in the code at edible my trigger and then it's referencing that creative device this is referencing our own prop that we're going to get to we just made and this is going to reference the trigger devices so it all starts gradually making sense <laughs> so we need to set this to my trigger now here's where we might see a little glitch oh it came in so there it recognizes it in the drop down box but if you open this drop down box and didn't see it you can use this eyedropper and select it in the scene but there's our bsm platform so now we're all linked up all i have to do now is hit launch session and save and then I'll come back when it's ready to launch. I did get a message over here that basically said you need to come out of modeling mode. So you can't be in modeling mode and be running in real time mode. So when you're done, be sure to switch back to just selection mode. But now it's all ready to go. So let's go into our game. I hit escape, start, and let's see if it works. Come over here. There's our platform. Yep. And there we go. I think if you build up a library of text files with verse functionality on it, that that'll be the fastest way to make things happen. The whole thing of creating functions, right, is reusability. There's no point in rebuilding Rome every five minutes. So once you have a function, save it as a text file, and then you can just bring it in as you saw was done. See, this is a thousand right here. So if I wanted this to go higher, I just type in a different value there. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care. Have a great day.